Hi everybody and welcome to this other tutorial number two where we're going to draw a waterfall and I'm using the Fabriano watercolor paper. It's for both drawing and watercoloring. It's a thick kind of uh, well, watercolor paper. And I'm also, I've also cut out some templates so we can create a sphere and I also uh, saved uh, the other side of what I've cut out because then I have the positive and the negative template to work with. Now what I did is I made a, a pre-sketch and this is a very simple one. This is the area that I'm going to cover so I'm simply putting in two lines for uh, pointing out where my drawing is going to end and in that way I also have a testing area to check if my brushes do not contain drops of oil paint. So this is my HB graphite pencil and what I did is I used uh, also a compass to draw a circle in and that will be uh, well kind of Mother Earth and in that circle I'm drawing in simple mountains uh, that reach all the way down towards a river <coughs> and there's also the edge of the earth so this is a kind of a surrealistic landscape from the time when people still thought that the earth was flat now at the edge of the uh, Earth, the waterfall pops over the edge, dropping down with uh, well, with force if you want. So it will also create uh, a damp fog in uh, the in the area below. Now for this dry brush drawing, I'm using the Rembrandt oil paint, but any kind of oil paint will do. And here you can see it, it's just a tiny drop that I put in there on my palette. And uh, you can use a simple brush, but uh, Rembrandt paint is a little bit more thick than some other paints. So I also use a little drop of sewing oil and then I, well, mix that all together you can see it here and in that way I am creating a thin layer of oil paint and I brush it out as good as I can and then my uh, drawing brushes will do the rest of course so divide it evenly as good as you can onto your palette and here you can see my uh, setup sketch and the setup sketches for all my drawings here on the YouTube can be found of course on my Patreon page. You can simply print them out or um, well use them as a reference and also all my tutorials are there live one-on-one -on -one, because nowadays I draw and talk at the same time so there's no speeding up on my Patreon page. Well, here I started to put in the first uh, gray tones with the brush and the oil paint, of course. On the right side, you see my testing area. So it's very uh, well wise to have that for yourself, to check your brush for drops of oil paint, because once you get a blob into your drawing you cannot erase that anymore then you have a big fat blob in your drawing and you otherwise have to start over or just live with it or be creative with it and make it an animal or something now this is the waterfall itself so I start uh, with the front of the drawing in this case and you can see how easily this waterfall can be drawn with this technique. 
It works very quickly indeed. And it should be about, well, 10 times as fast as when you were to draw this one with graphite. Now this is my uh, pencil eraser, you can see it here. The oil paint is such a thin layer that it can easily be erased with the pencil eraser or your kneaded eraser. My kneaded eraser is by Royal Talents and my pencil eraser is by Koinor. Here you have your uh, mountain area if you want. And also here I use the pencil eraser to draw in a little bit of um, well rocky structure. And this is my clean brush. I use that to erase the rubbles. And the rubbles you get once you start erasing parts. Now let's start to have a look at the sky area. For this I use the very big makeup brush. I test it out on the right side of my drawing, on my testing area, and then I simply put in a tone of grey, like so, and I used the template. Then I pick up my kneaded eraser, and by pressing down that kneaded eraser I can easily create beautiful skies and clouds. What you can also do is use the side of your template and in that way you can start to create some sunny beams. So that's very neat too. You can see it here also. I will do that on the left side too. I simply take that piece of template and brush alongside it and in that way I very quickly create those amazing sunbeams. Then I simply uh, lighten up the clouds a little bit more and this is how quick that goes. Now of course this video is forwarded, fasted forwarded a little bit but still this is a very very easy and very quick way of drawing. And that's why I love that dry brush technique so much, because I'm not known for my patience. <laughs> well, we continue this drawing and here we have the rocks on the underneath of the flat earth that we are creating. And what you can also see is that I use different kinds of brushes for different kinds of effects. So, for instance, for the sky area, uh, I used that very big makeup brush to get an even uh, big area. And I use a smaller brush for straight lines or for, um, well, maybe the rocky uh, structures. So then I pick up the smaller brush. But all brushes are... Um, quite sturdy and the hairs pop right back. They're just acrylic brushes, not expensive at all. Now here in the front of the mountain formations, if you want, I put in a, a little bit more structure on the front, of course, and then as the mountains go backwards and backwards and farther away from us, I make sure not to put in any detail at all. So I only put in detail in the front of the drawing. In that way you get a magnificent atmospheric perspective. So a lot of structure in front and hardly anything uh, on way in the back of your drawing. But you can also do if you want to create a sharp edge, just pick up your graphite pencil and draw in that edge if you want to. Okay, now let's look at the foggy mist way at the bottom of your drawing. You simply take the big brush again, the makeup brush, 
and you can also pinch the hairs together a little bit and in that way I am creating a kind of like you are on top of the clouds and in this way it uh, looks like your a surrealistic landscape is kind of floating around in the universe if you want but these are all just practices for getting good uh, with that dry brush technique and to see how dark you can go and we have here uh, well bigger areas uh, we have some structure going on we have water going on we have mountains going on we have a sky going on and we have some magnificent sunbeams going on all within one practice so I think this surrealist surrealistic landscape is an actual excellent way to get acquainted furthermore with that dry brush technique and I sure hope that you will give this drawing a try because it will help you a lot. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And of course, I also hope to see you in lesson number three next week, next Friday. If you want to learn more, visit my Patreon page. And for all of you, I would say I see you again next Friday.